Last year's Indy 500 had no fans in the stands, but what about a race with no drivers in the cars? That's something that's happening at the Speedway this fall. Tonight, Jenny Runovich shows us the high stakes in the Indy Autonomous Challenge. On the very track where talented drivers push the limits of what's possible, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is about to host what some think is impossible. The world's first head-to-head -head race with fully autonomous cars. High speeds, roaring engines, no driver in the cockpit. The Indy Autonomous Challenge is a 20-lap competition merging science, students, and sport. Delara made the chassis, and there's major corporate investment, but college students are fueling the innovation. There's a $1 million prize for the university that takes the checkered flag. And this is really a unique opportunity for the students to take something that they've done in the lab and bring it into practice in, in just absolutely huge way. This is a laboratory the size of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Trying to find the most perfect index point. And this is where young engineers are inventing and perfecting the software that'll go in the car and make decisions at 200 miles an hour. It shows a lot of data like uh, we keep on analyzing this stuff. Purdue Black and Gold, paired with the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, is one of 30 teams from 14 states and 11 countries gearing up for the October race at IMS. How to build the fastest qualifying lap, how to work on overtaking, how to work and manage the dynamics and the suspension. It is like very old style kind of race. They've spent months using simulators and developing complex computer codes to teach their car human-like behavior on how to handle the track. Actually, Actually, better than human. Autonomous race cars, they say, have more precision than a driver operating on instinct. The advantage for us is that we can determine exactly. We don't have to have a sense of it, which is what drivers do. We could capture stuff about the friction with the track. We could know exactly what the engine map looks like when we make decisions about steering and throttle. They also have to avoid a crash by predicting what other cars will do while going really, really fast. That's the challenging part. That's the challenging part. Ironically, one of the Purdue team's PhD students has never been behind the wheel of any car. I myself, I, don't, I can't drive. <laughs> no, I can't drive. <laughs> Not joking. So he has a vested interest in this autonomous challenge, but what he's creating with technology will benefit drivers too. There are real world applications for automation, better safety and performance for us on the highway and for competitors in the Indy 500. You know, some of the collision avoidance systems that are going to be required to run an autonomous race could also be integrated, if proven to be safe and effective, back into the racing vehicles. That is the instance where this will come useful, right? Safety is also there, and the thrill of the race and the enthusiasm which we have for racing is also there. Right? Automotive innovation has been part of the Speedway since its inception. A proving ground that brought us the rearview mirror, stronger tires, better barriers to save lives. And now you'd have to imagine the track's founders would be proud to see that mission continue with a seemingly futuristic race on that famed Indy Oval. Mm. The race teams just got their cars this past weekend. They're going to start testing on the track this month. The actual race is set for October 23rd at IMS.